This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on 39 Dunedin News, Doc gets in behind a local group's conservation campaign, but support from another area is also required. Better weather gives contractors an opportunity to fill coastal sand sausages, but is it too little, too late? And an annual festival draws one of the best Māori tattooists to the city. Good evening Dunedin, I'm Rebecca Dupree. A grassroots wildlife conservation group is getting a boost to its profile thanks to a partnership with DOC. The government department is throwing its support behind an Aramoana based trust as part of a campaign to highlight the protection work being done in Otago. But those in the group say they need the support of the whole community to make a real impact. Looking out for local wildlife. It's all in a day's work for Aramoana Conservation Trust Chair Bradley Kernow. The trust helps coordinate cleanups and conservation advocacy around the coastal settlement, and it's work that's been helped along by the Conservation Department. The spotlight is to just show the wider Dunedin community that we actually exist, that we're actually out here doing it, and that we're really honoured as a charitable trust because we've got so many natural treasures living just here at Aramana with the yellow-eyed penguins and the sea lions and there's albatross just over the road. The Trust undertakes a wide range of projects within the community to protect local wildlife. A weed control program is in place as well as work to monitor and give first aid to yellow-eyed penguins. We work with DOC in a lot of ways with whether it be protecting the yellow-eyed penguins from weasel stoats and ferrets and working with them in the salt marsh which is just behind me here to make sure that Mediterranean cooch and other weeds aren't invading so that they stop the birds from, native New Zealand birds from wading. The partnership with DOC is all about showing what can be achieved as a collective rather than a group working alone. Both the yellow-eyed penguin and the New Zealand sea lion are both vulnerable species and Kerno wants the wider community to be aware of the work being done to protect them. Our biggest challenge is, is making sure that people understand how special this place is. A lot of people do get that and do understand that, but we still have a long way to go before there's a wider appreciation of just how special this place is. The Adamoana Conservation Trust is just one of several groups locally that DOC is throwing its support behind this year. The next spotlight is on the Quarantine Island Carmo Total Community Group ahead of the Save the Otago Peninsula Group later this year. Annabelle Dick. 39, Dunedin News. Sub-zero temperatures overnight resulted in a number of delayed flights locally and a warning to motorists. An icy runway at Dunedin International Airport prevented flights from departing or arriving for much of the morning. Met service recorded minus 7 degrees Celsius at the airport at 8am. A flight to Christchurch was cancelled and several other international and domestic flights delayed. The New Zealand Transport Agency issued a South Island-wide warning urging motorists to take care when driving, especially in shaded areas and over bridges where black ice is common. A number of sand sausages are finally being installed at Ocean Beach after a run of bad weather last week delayed the process. The $800,000 exercise is the Dunedin City Council's latest attempt to protect the dunes from erosion and heavy seas. But questions remain as to whether the sandbags are enough to protect the vulnerable coastline. Pushing sand uphill. Two diggers and a handful of contractors are working on filling these large tubes with a blend of sand and water. It's the Dunedin City Council's latest attempt to help prevent high seas from eroding the sand dunes. The method was tried around 10 years ago, but the remains of those remain evident at St Clair. The problem of coastal erosion in Dunedin is not a new one. The workers behind me are again working with sand sausages in an attempt to staunch the coastal erosion. Tom Dyer of the DCC is one of those working on the erosion and believes the sand sausages will help. However, it appears to be a short-term fix. Yeah, so we, we got about nine years out of the last sand sausages um, and they were a slightly different design and configuration. Um, the, the new materials are a lot thicker and more robust. Um, so provided we get 
a similar run of, of weather over the next decade. We're hoping to get roughly the same amount of time out of them. Dyer says along with the new tubes being thicker, they're also being made in compartments, allowing for easy repair work. The sand inside is a product of recent harbour dredging by Port Otago, mixed with seawater. The last time this type of work was undertaken, it came at a cost of around $300,000. But Dyer says this time around, the budget is considerably more. Uh, so the, the construction works contract is around $400,000, um, but the overall works, including design and, and uh, procurement of the bags and procurement of sand from Port Otago, uh, will come to around 800000 he says the timeline for the project is weather dependent, with completion forecast for late July. Council staff are asking for the public's cooperation while the work is going on, particularly during high tide when parts of the beach will be closed. Daryl Baser, 39, Dunedin News. Police are on the lookout for a stolen Nissan Bluebird that was involved in a short police pursuit yesterday. The vehicle was stolen from outside a Murray Street address in Kew at around 9.30 last night. A police pursuit began just after 11pm but was called off shortly after. Senior Sergeant Shona Lowe says the reason the pursuit was abandoned has yet to be logged. At this stage, the stolen car is not recovered. One of the country's top Tamoko artists is visiting Dunedin as part of Māori New Year festivities. The Tauranga-based artist is giving brave residents the opportunity to get a traditional Māori tattoo and is filling in a much-needed niche in the south. A small amount of pain for a big gain. Tamoko artist Julie Paama Pingali has set up shop at Toitu Otago Settlers Museum as part of this year's Matariki festivities. She's here to give game residents their own tamoko, a permanent body and face marking traditionally used by Māori. Exploring um, positive things about around Māori identity and um, the idea of regeneration and yeah, and um, so tamoko is kind of serves that role and within Māori -dom. The meaning behind tāmoko is up for debate, with some saying it symbolises family and tradition, while others see it as an initiation into adulthood. Pa Ama Pengali says she'll tattoo anyone, regardless of their ethnicity, as long as they know what they want and the history behind it. She says she's always happy to come down south, where the art form isn't as widely practised. People are asking all over New Zealand, but um, I actually quite like Dunedin, because the south is like a different... I don't know, I get opportunities in the north all the time, but I'm always kind of humbled by um, the South Island and their lack of opportunity. This is just one of many events taking place in Dunedin for this year's Puaka Matariki Festival. While Payama Pengali believes Māori culture and identity should be celebrated daily, she says the festival is a great way to see it highlighted. I think it's amazing how far Matariki's come. I think it's important to own our own cultural stories and our own significant events. Um, and it's, it's simply, it's like moko itself, you know, it's important that we hold on to things that are important to us. The Tāmoko station within the Toitu foyer will run for the next two weeks with Matariki festivities on until the end of June. Annabelle Dick, 39, Dunedin News. Still to come on 39 Dunedin News, we take a closer look at the latest developments in the US presidential race and the work that's about to start at Moana Pool. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. On again, the Star Regent 24 hour book sale starts noon 10th of June. Don't miss out! Junk Free June is about making a change that makes you healthier and happier. Kick the junk or that bad habit during June and you'll be helping yourself and supporting the Cancer Society. Get others to support you and get rewarded with discounts on some great products and services too. Go to junkfreejune.org.nz today and get started. You'll be doing good for you and for local people affected by cancer. We're a 25 Moro place at Dogwood Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass-produced sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and 
be able to get something they're able to eat more than they, than they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. Come one, come all to the Lana Castle Winter Ball. Traditional dancing, dining and fun to be had. Dress up in your Victorian costume and experience the glamour of yesteryear and witness the address of the haggis. Friday 22nd of July, get in fast as tickets are limited. Call 4761616 or go online to www.lanarkcastle.co.nz. It's Junk Free June. I'm giving up chocolate. Go to junkfreejune.org.nz today and get started. has no arms, no legs, has a drill in its mouth up to eight hours a day and still never complains. It's one of 72 mannequin torsos in our new $3.8 million dental simulation lab. The first and only facility of its kind in New Zealand. My name is Nikki Rose Coltolaro and this is my place in the world. Take your place in the world. Pregnant, need to talk, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free, it's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. It's Junk Free June. I'm giving up the couch. Go to junkfreetune.org.nz today and get started. Welcome back. New Zealand's largest satellite television company has confirmed it may merge with a telecommunications giant. Sky Television and Vodafone are in talks about joining forces to combine their New Zealand assets. The two companies are already in partnership, offering bundled deals to customers consisting of TV, broadband and phone services. The television provider placed a trading halt on its shares before the announcement this morning. And on that note, let's take a look at today's markets. The NZX50 has closed the day down 46 points. It's now at 6,992. The Dow Jones is up 18 points. And to the exchange rates, the Kiwi dollar is up against all the currencies we follow. Hillary Clinton has all but secured the Democratic nomination in the American presidential race, surpassing Bernie Sanders and the number of secured delegates. But whether the election is something those outside the U.S. should take notice of is up for debate. And Professor of International Relations Robert Patman joins us to talk about it. Good evening. Good evening, Rebecca. Well, this is a fascinating subject. Is Hillary Clinton's nomination a done deal? I think she's nearly there. Uh, today, America is contesting. The results are coming in from six contests and she's won at least three of them and looks well placed to take California. So I think it's all virtually over. She has actually said after the New Jersey victory that this is a milestone and she's effectively claiming the nomination. Um, it looks, however, that uh, Bernie Sanders may soldier on, but I think there are signs that uh, she will, at least in theory, be the nominee um, for in, in terms of pledged delegates. The final decision can't be made until the convention occurs in July. So he doesn't have really any show of making a comeback here? I wouldn't say he has got any show. There's several things that we don't, that, that, that could upset, and this has been a, let's face it, this has been a contest of upsets. Mm. But one thing is that uh, Hillary Clinton is facing a criminal investigation uh, for, which involves the Clinton Foundation um, and also her use of emails, uh, used a private server to communicate confidential traffic involving uh, her email as Secretary of State and she has just been severely criticised by the Inspector General of the State Department and point, uh, someone who was appointed by the Obama administration. Uh, so, and the FBI are apparently interviewing Hillary Clinton within the next week or so. So 
uh, we do not know whether that uh, this will lead to indictment. So uh, I, I think you know there may be those in the Sanders camp who want to soldier on in the hope that if they're still in the race and Clinton faces proceedings from the FBI, I mean that would li literally knock her out of the race oh if that God. happened. Yeah. Why do you think this election has captured the attention of the, the world? I think because it's been a sort of rebellion in two major parties against the respective establishments. Uh, Hillary, uh, 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 first of all, Hillary Clinton has had a really tough battle with Bernie Sanders. He started off about 3% in, in, the, in the polls and was widely derided as a fringe candidate, and he's given her a tremendous run for her money. He's won 23 primaries so far, and she's won 29 plus. So it, it looks like she's got it now, but it's been a really gruelling contest, and he's probably pushed her to the left of the party rather than further that she would rather go. Mm. Um, but So he's changed the, the terms of the debate. On the other side of the aisle, the Republican Party, uh, Mr. Trump, has, so, so, you know, he, he has uh, come out as the outsider running against the Republican establishment and won. So you have two non-establishment candidates in both the Democrat Party and the Republican Party who've tapped into this tremendous anger within America about the poor performance of the American political system. Mm. And uh, they seem to have tapped into it quite effectively. Can the politics of another country have an impact locally? I think it can. America's a bit of a trendsetter in many things, including politics. And I think one of the things that's become obvious in this campaign is that not only can outsiders actually confront establishments and do reasonably well, but issues which are seen as unfashionable, such as inequality, have grown in momentum in this campaign. And I think this is not just confined to the United States. I think there's a growing sense in many democracies, including New Zealand, that we need to make, our, make sure that economic, our respective economic systems work better for more people rather than a relatively small minority. Is this the most widely publicised primary process in US history? Yes, it's probably one of the most controversial, and I still think there may be further twists and turns yet, but it looks like it's going to be uh, Mr. Trump versus uh, Hillary Clinton. Yes, that, that brings me to the next question. Donald, Donald Trump looks like being the Republican candidate, but could that change? Uh, it could, well, he's, in, he's still... Uh, it's interesting, the Speaker, Paul Ryan, said he's backing Mr. Trump, although he acknowledges that his recent comments about a Mexican-American judge mm. with respect to an inquiry into the Trump University, uh, Mr. Trump was infuriated by comments by the judge uh, regarding improprieties at Trump University, and Mr. Trump retaliated, as he always does, by suggesting that it was all down to the fact uh, of the judge's Mexican heritage. And Mr. Paul Ryan said today that these are clearly racist comments, but he will continue to back oh. Mr. Trump. So, it, it, given that ambiguity, I think Mr. Trump, you know, it, it is also possible, of course, and likely that there will be a third party challenge. That, that, that the Republican establishment will be scheming to put up someone against Trump. Mm. So it's, it's a very interesting space. I mean, one interesting thing about this race between Trump and Clinton is they both have very high, proof, high disapproval ratings. That is, they're not particularly popular amongst the wider public, either of them. So that's an interesting contest. Do you think that they're evenly matched? Uh, <laughs> I think that Hillary Clinton will be hoping that once the contest over with Sanders, she'll be able to rally the support that's gone to Sanders mm -hmm. behind her. And I'm, I think if that happens, then I think she should comfortably defeat Trump. Mm -hmm. What we don't know, however, is whether Trump can rally the Republican establishment behind him and therefore, you know, uh, multiply that support and to use it. He certainly will not, he will certainly take the gloves off against Hillary Clinton. She's actually got away with quite a lot so far on this email thing because Sanders made a point of saying he wasn't going to, he wanted it issue, he wanted the campaign to be issues based. Mm. But I don't think Mr. Trump will spare uh, Hillary Clinton on this issue. And I think, mind you, I'm sure the Clintons will be digging up dirt on Trump as well. So it could be a real, you know, it could be a real slugfest. <laughs> Watch this space. Professor of International Relations, Robert Patman, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. After the break on 39 Danita News, Moana Paul's foyer is about to get a makeover and we're on the streets to find out if you'd like to see the octagon become smoke free. Emu oil has been used for centuries to support joint mobility and tired muscles. Also helpful for supporting healthy skin. Available as oil or in capsules, go to www.silverhorn.co.nz to order emu oil today. It's Junk 3 June. 
I'm giving up the couch. Go to junkfreetune.org.nz today and get started. the Lana Castle Winter Ball. Traditional dancing, dining and fun to be had. Dress up in your Victorian costume and experience the glamour of yesteryear and witness the address of the Haggis. Friday 22nd of July, get in fast as tickets are limited. Call 4761616 or go online to www.lanarkcastle.co.nz. I understand now how economics can affect global warming. And I found out how grass growth in New Zealand affects Fashion Week in Milan. I can even tell you how smartphone technology affects the survival of mountain gorillas. Sorry. Because at the Otago Business School, it's not just about the world of business, it's how business affects the world. I'm Kim. <laughs> Michaela. David. And this is our place in the world. Take your place in the world. We're a 25 Moreau place at Dog with Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass-produced sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or that they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. It's Junk Free June. I'm giving up chocolate. Go to junkfreetune.org.nz today and get started. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Welcome back. Work to refurbish the foyer at Moana Pool is getting underway after more than a year in the planning. Pupils at 11 local secondary schools were asked to vote for their favourite design last year as part of the council's effort to include youths in civic decision making. Work on the preferred option will begin on site next week and contractors have already begun prefabricating new elements. The option which received the most votes involves a bright colour scheme, new built-in wooden furniture and several feature walls to brighten the space. Dunedin City Council staff estimate the refurbishment will take about a month to complete, with most of the work scheduled at night to ensure customers aren't impacted. Last week marked World Smoke Free Day, an initiative designed to promote the smoke-free lifestyle worldwide. It comes as several local healthcare professionals continue their campaign to make parts of the city smoke-free. With that in mind, our Word on the Street team went out to ask members of the public if they think smoking should be banned in the octagon. I don't know, I smoke myself, so some places, yeah, I agree, I agree with it, but not, not all places. Sure, always, I don't smoke. But, you know, I don't suppose the smokers would agree with that. No, I reckon it should be fine smoking the octagon. It's got, all the, it's got most of the seats. Yeah, plus also I think that, well, since uh, Cincinnati is basically a city that is mainly places where people can smoke, uh, should, um, people should actually be allowed to smoke an octagon because it's basically freedom. Uh, yes, I think so. Can you say why? I really don't like the smell of smoke. <laughs> and it's not healthy. So you, when you uh, smoke in a public place, it's putting others' uh, health in the risk. It'd probably work out. I can see it being, it's being a bigger problem more and more, so it might be nice to be a smoke-free environment. Yeah, I believe it should be banned from the Octagon. Probably, probably a few other different places around town it could be done. Uh, I don't believe it should be because I believe it's personal choice and freedom of will and freedom of choice. Uh, I do understand that a lot of people don't like the cigarette butts on the ground, but 
there should be more leather bands for them, basically. Oh, brilliant. Not that I've ever noticed it particularly, but I'm perfectly happy to agree to that. And now recapping tonight's top stories on 39 Dunedin News. The Department of Conservation is throwing its support behind a local group that's working to protect the wildlife in Aramoana. Sand sausages to combat erosion are finally being installed at Ocean Beach after wintry weather halted the process last week. And a visiting artist is giving, giving residents the opportunity to get their own tamoko tattoos as part of the city's Maori New Year program. Well, it's time now to find out what's going to be in Thursday's Otago Daily Times. And editor Barry Stewart joins us. Good evening. Hello, Rebecca. After a decade of controversy and delays, the Otago Regional Council has um, highlighted a city car park as the preferred site for its new headquarters. So we're going to lose car parks for a new building? Absolutely, yes. Oh, yes, goodness. so that'll be controversial, no it doubt. Will, it will definitely be so. Uh, we have an interview with uh, Brian Dagg of Queenstown, who recently climbed Mount Everest. Uh, we had a story on when he hit the, uh, hit the peaks, so we, uh, he's back down and we've had a chat to him. A uh, funeral today, of course, for uh, Bishop Helene Boyle. Uh, in sport, the rugby, rugby, the All Blacks have been named, uh, or will be named uh, in tomorrow's paper. They're not named yet. Uh, and the uh, ICC have responded to uh, the criticism um, Brendan McCullum handed out uh, in his uh, speech at the uh, Cowdery Centre. What's happening with the Dunedin Gymnastics Academy? A very good question, uh, Rebecca, and thanks for asking. Uh, well, actually, rather sad news. They have been forced to write off $120,000 worth of uh, gymnastics equipment because of the, of course, the uh, asbestos scare oh. at their building. Oh, goodness. Well, details mm. on that one in tomorrow's ODT. There's more to come on asbestos. Absolutely. You. Thank you, Barry. Okay. Time now for local weather. This 39 Dunedin News weather update proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorn's Emu Oil. And here's our city view. It's taken of a fake sea lion statue at St. Clair. Around the city at 3 o'clock today, 10 degrees in the central city, 9 at the gardens and 8 for the Tyree. To the situation and fronts and a trough of low pressure will move over the country tomorrow and Friday. What that means around the region is nor'westers with some cloud for Invercargill, Gore and Tiano. Nor'westers for Alexander with some brief rain and all these towns on 14 degrees. And nor'westers with brief rain for Queenstown, Omaru, Wanaka and Twizel. Highs of around 13 or 14 degrees. And that brief rain is a feature of our evening as well. We're dropping to a low of 7. Tomorrow and Friday though, sunny periods with nor'westers and a high of 14 each day. <laughs> and finally to the Otago Pallet Fires title and fishing information. High tide tomorrow morning is at 7 o'clock. Low tide follows at 10 to 2. And fishing conditions are still not looking too good, but if you were keen to get your line in the water, you could try it around 20 past 4 in the afternoon. And that's all from the team here at 39 Dunedin News for Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.